Follow these important steps to troubleshoot and maintain your Model 3629 vending machine. Tools you need include an 11 32nd inch socket, a Phillips and Phillips number no. 2 screwdriver, a force gauge, and a utility knife. Begin by disconnecting the LED lights here above the power box to eliminate the glare. Pull the connector forward to keep it from dropping down the back. Also, power off the machine here. In order to move the elevator bucket up to the top of the machine manually, we will need to disconnect the elevator motor in the upper left hand side of the open cabinet door. Be sure to press the locking tab to unlock it from the socket housing. Disconnect the plug by pulling an up and down motion. Do not apply sideways force as this could break the connector housing. Now manually lift the bucket up to the top slowly until it stops. Once the bucket is at the top, confirm that it is touching the switch on the right. On the left side, there needs to be a gap of approximately an eighth inch as shown. Now that we've moved the elevator bucket to the top, we can check the lock slide operation that is responsible for locking and unlocking the product delivery door. The lock slide should be free and drop down like this after removing the spring. When the lock slide is in the up position here, it activates the top switch here. This is the standby position. This is the position the machine is in when it awaits a product to be purchased. When the lock slide is in the middle here, it is in the park position. The position occurs when the baffle is being moved in or out. The baffle prohibits access from the outside to the inside of the cabinet to protect against pilfering and stealing. Once the baffle is extended and in place, prohibiting cabinet access, the lock slide will go into the bottom position, activating the bottom switch here. This is the vend or unlocked position. This is the only lock slide position where the delivery door can be opened. The lock slide must be free to move to the position needed. It is crucial that the delivery door can close unimpeded. When the door does not close completely, the lock slide cannot come up and lock the door. If this happens, the elevator will not be able to operate. In order for the door to close correctly, there must be two hinge spacer shims behind the top section of the piano hinge. If there is only one hinge spacer shim, please order the correct replacements from Vennet free of charge under warranty. To check whether the two spacer plates are fitted, begin by removing the optical switch with these screws here with a Phillips number no. 2 screwdriver. Remove the five remaining number no. 8 nuts with an 11 32nd inch socket. Now take off the top hinge section, including the door. You should find the two hinge spacer shims. If there is only one spacer, order the correct replacement parts from Vennet. Machines manufactured before November of 2020 will only have one thinner number 18 spacer. Secure the hinge back in place with the nuts and the optical switch with the screws. Make sure your power tool is not set to maximum torque to prevent breaking a stud. If you are adding the spacers in place, you will need new half inch screws to secure the optical switch back in place. The safety optical switch serves to stop any movement of the elevator and the baffle to prevent harm to anyone reaching into the delivery bin. When the delivery door flap opens, the breaker bracket will pass between these two walls, which blocks the light between them, notifying the machine that the door is open and for the elevator and baffle motors to stop immediately. The D1 LED indicator on the elevator control board indicates whether the door is open or closed. If on, the door is closed. If off, the door is open. The D1 light must turn off before the delivery door flap passes beyond the edge of the cross rail when opening. 
If the breaker bracket is not adjusted correctly, the elevator controller is not alerted to stop and the elevator bucket can make unwanted contact with the open delivery door. If the breaker bracket is not properly in place, the machine could think the delivery door is closed when in reality it is not. As an approximate guide, this is where the breaker bracket should be. It must be parallel with the door hinge like so. Once adjusted to the correct position, hold the bracket as you tighten with a Phillips number 2 screwdriver. Use a Phillips number 2 screwdriver bit when securing the optical switch in place here on the hinge. Check there isn't excess gasket material in the bottom corners of the delivery door. This can prevent the delivery door from closing fully. Material buildup on the corners or anywhere on the gasket needs to be trimmed off with a utility knife. It is important to remove any excess rubber material on the door seal so that the door can close freely and properly to allow the lock slide to operate correctly. It is important the magnetic gasket is able to snap the delivery door shut. In order to test this, just open the door ever so slightly, approximately the width of your finger. Support the weight of the door with a finger and allow it to close very slowly and ensure it snaps shut. Opening the door wide and releasing it to slam close is not a helpful way to test the door for correct operation. If the door remains cracked open and does not snap shut, the lock slide will hit the underside part of the door and the elevator will not be able to function. To review, Make sure the two spacers are in place and the gasket is not bulging so the door is freely to close properly and the correct optical switch setting is in place. We will now put the spring back onto the lock slide. Put the bottom loop of the spring on the bottom post and raise the slide up and hook the top loop onto the top post. The slide lock is now under the spring tension. Now slowly move the elevator bucket down using two hands, keeping it parallel and even. Stop when it touches the lock slide. The elevator is now in the standby position. We will now check the timing belt tension. Having the belt too loose or too tight will prevent the elevator from functioning correctly and may cause damage. Use a force gauge to check the tension. Make sure the gauge starts at zero. Begin at the crossbar here. Then push this end onto the front section of the timing belt. Push slowly until the front belt touches the back belt. Do this slowly. You need a reading between 0.9 and 1.1. This setting is a bit too high at 1.2. When checking the other side, we got another reading of 1.2. The tension is a bit too high, so we will reduce the tension slightly by adjusting these nuts in a counterclockwise direction. If you need to increase the tension, adjust the nut clockwise. The following steps will help you check for proper baffle operation. The security baffle protects products and prevents thieves from accessing machine items. To access the baffle, we will need to remove the bottom tray. Remove three number eight Phillips screws from each side of the tray. Then disconnect the tray harness so you can lift the tray off the rails. Then push the rails back in. The baffle crank can be manually rotated in a clockwise motion only. Moving the baffle crank in the wrong direction will likely break the gearbox. Once you move the baffle into this position, you can see the two limit detector switches on the motor plate. It's important the crank cam that contacts the back switch is not bent and that when the crank cam rotates, it actuates both baffle in and out limit switches correctly. Check for other damage to the brackets or switches. To put the tray back in place, pull out the rails, put the tray back on the rails and secure it in place with three number eight Phillips screws on each side. Then reconnect the tray harness and the retaining clip. When you are finished checking your Evoke elevator machine, make sure the elevator motor is reconnected in the upper left hand corner here. Be sure to reconnect the LED lights here. 
Once you turn the machine back on, make sure to wait 23 seconds for the system to boot up before closing the door. If you do not wait 23 seconds, you run the risk of the health safety alarm activating, preventing the machine from operating. After the 23 seconds, close the door and let the machine do a reset. The display should say the elevator is initializing. If all the tray magnets are counted, the machine will be ready for a sale. For more assistance, contact VenNet Technical Support at 1-800-833-4411 or email service at vennetusa.com.